what makes me feel a South African woman. Yeah. Wow, the beauty of living in this country, you know, living in the change of the country. There's been a lot of change since um, 94, you know, since Mandela became president. We now have, there's hope for us women now, you know, we are recognized as intelligent human beings who are capable of running their own companies, who are capable of making decisions, you know. So that's very, that's the good thing about South Africa today. I have a gift. What am I going to give back to Sparrow? I'm a professional teacher, so why can't I help the kids around me? I'm a chosen few player, a defender. <laughs> Before I came to Chosen Free, I was living my life alone. No friends, just going to school or just going to work and then come back home like that. But when I came here to Chosen Few, I learned many things about how to be a lesbian and how to be a proud lesbian and then how to be a feminist and a activist. That, that's why I said most of people out there if they know about chosen few, they just came here and learn more about themselves, you know. Because in in other teams, they just act as women. They're scared to be a black lesbian woman. It's just because of the coaches, maybe they said, no, don't act like this, be like this, you know. Now here we are proud out lesbian. The difference between myself and my mother back then is that um, she witnessed a lot of you know, a lot of pain, you know, of racial segregation. And uh, she grew up, you know, having to, to be strong, having to shield herself from that, you know, uh, having to protect herself from um, all this racial tension and being, being seen as an being seen as less of a person because of, of the color of her skin. That's the difference between her and me. And um, having to shield us, her children, from that pain as well. You know. And having to fight for everything. She had to fight for education. She had to fight for a job. She had to fight to learn to drive, to have a, a driver's license. You know. They were seen as less people, people who had to be domestic workers, who had to stay in the kitchen, work in the kitchens, work in the fields. So she had to fight all of that. She was a nurse. You know, she had to learn. She, had, she was educated and she became a nurse. And later she became a businesswoman. So she could, you know, she could provide for her kids. She, so we could have a better future, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's the difference between my mom. Well, I started as a very young girl. I loved singing since I was young. I used to listen to my mom's LP. the lounge at late at night I would play his LPs and I would imagine myself singing for a huge crowd. I would take a, a microphone, a pretend microphone and, and sing in the lounge. It was a beautiful dream. And then when I grew I was older, I pursued it by going to tertiary and studying music. That's where I met my husband. Yeah. And um it's always been a dream. Now I'm busy working on my album you know, and I'm hoping it will be a huge success. I want to, I want to travel the world. You know. I want people to learn about my music and to learn more about me and learn more about my culture and my country. That, that's my dream. <laughs>
we've been married for two years now. Yeah, we started by having kids before marriage. Yeah. But when my uh, was the doctor tell me that I'm pregnant, I was so happy. And kids are my passion. Being a mother is a beautiful experience. You, know. you suddenly have these small people that you that you have to take care of. You have to teach them love about life, respect about the beauty of nature. You know, and uh, it's a beautiful experience. It changes you as a person. Well, polygamy it's part of our tradition, part of our culture. Yeah. And personally, I don't I don't believe in polygamy, and I wouldn't want to practice it. Hopefully, my husband doesn't as well. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so some people still practice it, and most people they don't practice that today because times have changed. You know, we now have diseases like HIV and AIDS and STDs, so you need to be very careful. Those days, people were like afraid of coming out and saying that this is the situation. So, disclosing wasn't easy. But for me, when I got the diagnosis, when I got a little bit better, I called my mom and said, you know what, they said I'm HIV positive. I heard her over the phone saying, oh, my God. I was coming back from church. It was a church from 6 o'clock, late until 7 o'clock. Then I was walking in the street. Then the guy knows me very well that I'm a soccer player. Just call me with the names, and then girl, well, she just, he just come in the bag holding a gun and said, "Let's go that side." When we go that side, I met another two. Then there were three, but the the other one was busy carrying the gun. They didn't do anything, but the two raped me. Then that's why I was pregnant. But is that two guys? They know me very well. That I'm a soccer player, and they, I like to go where and where and where. It's like they know me very well, but I didn't go and report to the police station because I was scared that they will never take my case that much because if I told them that if they rape me because of, I'm a lesbian, they will just ignore my case. If they rape you, they tell you that they want to prove that you are a woman. That's why we get raped as, as lesbians. In my culture, it's, it's very taboo speaking about sex. It's like, it's disrespectful. But unfortunately, in these times, you have to educate your kids about sex so they can grow knowing the dangers of having unprotected sex and the dangers of having different partners at the same time. So we really need to stick to develop a new tradition, you know of talking about sex with our kids. I think I live better now uh, after being diagnosed HIV before, like uh, more than before. Because I know my limits. Okay. You know, I know my limits. I've got a boyfriend and the first thing I told him when he said, I met him, he said, no, oh, I love you. Then I said, uh-huh, you don't know what to love. I'm HIV positive. He said, no, man. He looked at me like from, and I said, yeah, I don't want to put you in a situation where you, you know. Then I said, okay, then what? And I said, you know, I have my principles. If you love me, this is what you are going to do. I definitely plan on speaking to my daughter about sex, having these discussions. Telling about, you know, the first time she has a boyfriend and first time she'll have sex, you know, and uh, I'll, I'll tell her it's better to wait. It's definitely better to wait and to know your partner and know yourself first. It's important to know yourself first before you can, you know, get into that stage of having sex with a person, you know, and uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell her about marriage and, you know, it's better, it's definitely better to be married before you have kids, you know, because, yeah. Yes, I did, I did, that, I know better, that's why I'll tell her, I've got more experience about this, yeah. And how, how is your story? My story? Yeah, did you plan the first, uh, first daughter, for example? Uh, no, I did not, I did not, uh, she wasn't planned, and uh, 
She changed my life. It changed my life a lot, falling pregnant at that age. You know, when you're 21, that's where you begin living life and enjoying life. But I had to be a mother. So I, you know, I had to learn to be more responsible quickly. You know, if there was this person I had to take care of. So I had to grow up quickly. I had to grow up quickly. So, and uh, I wouldn't want that for her. I would want her to enjoy being in her 20s, you know, and enjoy going to school, to tertiary. Yeah. <laughs> no, <it's there. laughs> the secret behind all this, if you want to keep going, I gave my virus the name. And I always talk to it and say, you know what? The virus is wrong. You know what wrong? You stay here, inside me. If you react, I'm going to sleep. Then you're going to sleep too. We won't go all everywhere. We won't go dancing. We won't go, you know. If you want to enjoy life, just stay there, you know. I'll go everywhere where I want to go. You don't want to sleep here and do nothing. You want to go to work with me? You want to meet people? So, behave. You know, that keeps me going. <laughs> what is your relation now with your family? Um, I'm happy with my family after I told them that I'm a lesbian because before I was like living two lives. Outside I'm a lesbian. At home, I'm just like, you see, but I was not happy. After I told my family, but they just reacted badly sometimes and they didn't understand. And then they just come around a little bit and a little bit, understand me. My mother just said to me, are you happy now because you told us you are a lesbian? I said, yes, I'm happy and I'm proud. I know I will make you proud to be who I am. Just said, maybe you want me to get married to a man. And then I can get married to the woman. If you are happy, I'm happy. Even my baby girl, she is very happy. She knows sometimes when I come with the girls, they said, I have two moms now. Sometimes said, oh yeah, I like that one. I'm happy with my baby girl to be a lesbian mom. Yeah. I dream that she, she becomes a strong, successful human, you know? that she doesn't have fear of going out there you know, and being herself. I think the most beautiful gift you can give yourself is to be yourself, and be free and be who you want to be. When my kids always tease me, the sparrow kids, oh, look at you, you are shaking your body. I say, oh, you know what, I'm happy. And I like talking to them, especially about the virus and the medication, encouraging them to take their medication and know that this is not the end of the world. This is not the end of your life. You have a life after. And fortunately, guys, you are growing and maybe, and we, we pray on that, there will be a cure. Then you have a chance to live longer. You will be mothers and fathers. And I want to see you out there and say, wow. That's my child. <laughs> <laughs>